Hello viewers, I welcome you all for this remaining concept uh, and the last concept in this fluorometric topic and the remaining concept which we are left out with is the instrumentation of fluorometry and the applications of fluorometry. Coming to the instrumentation of fluorometry, we have two different types of instrument uh, to measure this fluorometry. The one is fluorometer and the other one is spectrofluorometer. This fluorometer is somewhat similar uh, to the one which we use in UV visible uh, spectroscopy that is the colorimeter or absorption meters where the wavelength selectors are filters and these spectrofluorometers uh, are the kind of instruments which measure the fluorescence but the wavelength selectors here they are monochromators we have two different monochromators we have two monochromators here one is the excitation monochromator the other one is the emission monochromators whereas similarly the fluorimeters will be having the primary filters and the secondary filters we will discuss what is the reason for using two different wavelength selectors so before we discuss that uh, let us let me take you through the components of this instruments uh, which make up the fluorometer or spectrofluorometer the first we have is the source of radiation or the source of light the second component is the wavelength selectors which may be either filters or monochromators the third component is the sample cell and the last component is the detectors so the detectors and the source of radiations are the one or the, uh, the they are the same as the one which we use in invisible spectroscopy so for example mercury arc lamp xenon arc lamp and the tungsten lamp and the detectors what we used in UV visible spectroscopy the same detectors will be used here which is photovoltaic cell photo cell and the photomultiplier tubes i won't be discussing much on the sources of radiations and the detectors because they have already been discussed i request you to refer to the instrumentation of UV visible spectroscopy so coming to the filters and monochrom monochromators filters there are two types as i mentioned previously the primary filter and the secondary filter this primary and the secondary filters have uh, different jobs to do whereas the primary filter will absorb the visible radiation and transmit only the ultraviolet radiations whereas the secondary filter will absorb the ultraviolet radiations and transmit the visible radiation so th the job of primary and the secondary filter is exactly opposite the one absorbs the vis vis uh, visible radiations and transmits the ultraviolet radiations the other one absorbs the uh, ultraviolet radiations and transmits the visible light or the visible radiations similarly in uh, spectrofluorimeters we have monochromators as the wavelength selectors we have two different monochromators the one is and both the monochromators which is excitation and emission are used in the single instrument the excitation monochromator it isolates only the radiations which is absorbed by the molecule and the emission monochromator they absorb only the radiations that are emitted by the molecule so this excitation monochromators and the emission monochromators make up one monochromatic system in spectrofluorimeter whereas the primary filter and the secondary filter make up one wavelength selector in spectro uh, uh, fluorimeters not spectrofluorimeters fluorimeters coming to the sample cell uh, majority of this fluorescence uh, samples which are being assayed are in the form of solution so they are to be contained in a cylindrical or the rectangular fabricated cells which are either made up of glass or silica usually it is recommended to use a silica quartz uh, or the quartz quartz unlike glass has some ultraviolet uh, absorption so usually uh, the spectrofluorimeters where we use uh, the quit containers whereas the fluorimeters we use the glass containers which are very cheap so the path length is usually fixed either 10 mm or 1 cm and all the surf surfaces of the sample cells are polished unlike in ultraviolet spectroscopy where only two sides uh, two opposite sides are polished whereas the other two opposite sides are unpolished in nature coming to the general uh, instrumentation of uh, fluorimeter and spectrofluorimeter in this particular instrument i am taking both fluorimeter and spectrofluorimeter as an uh, simultaneous uh, representation and the grating or the monochromators make or comprise the spectrofluorimeter whereas the filters comprise the 
fluorimeter. So we have a source of radiation as like in ultraviolet spectroscopy and that source of radiation is subjected for grating or it is subjected for filtration here where only the ultraviolet radiations are let through and these radiations which are passing after this after passing through the primary filter or the diffraction grating or the excitation monochromator they are the ultraviolet radiations which have the shorter wavelength or they have higher energy and those higher energy radiations are made to fall on the sample cell and after the sample cell the emitted radiation are made to pass through the emitted or emission monochromator or the secondary filter as i have mentioned already the secondary filter has a job that allows only the visible radiation and it won't allow any ultraviolet radiations whereas the primary filters they allow the ultraviolet radiations but not the visible radiations so this is the difference between the primary and secondary filters so coming to the excitation and the uh, emission monochromators as i have mentioned these excitation monochromators uh, are used to select the wavelengths which are falling in the ultraviolet re uh, region uh, that is from 200 to uh, 400 nanometers and once after isolating those particular shorter wavelength radiations they are made to fall on the sample and the sample gets excited and it tends to show the fluorescence and one important thing we are noticing here is the arrangement of the source of radiation and the detector which is at right angles unlike in usable spectroscopy where it is in a straight line this is because we want to exclude the transmitted radiations for uh, we want to uh, avoid the of transmitted radiations reaching the detector and we want to measure only the emitted radiations that is the reason why we are arranging the detector at right angles to the source of radiation so this was about the general instrumentation a typical uh, filter fluorimeter is being represented here in this particular slide where i have a source of radiation which usually will be the mercury vapor lamp and we have a defining aperture here which defines a particular uh, amount of radiation uh, which is crossing through this aperture and we have shutter we have some uh, condensing lenses a b and c and we have a primary filter and followed by a sample holder and we can see the arrangement is right angles the source is at right angles to the detector here and we have secondary filters with some condensing lenses D and E. So this is an arrangement of fluorimeter and you can also see there is a reference detector here where the source of radiation is made to fall and this reference detector will sense all the radiations that are being produced by this source of radiation whereas this particular sample uh, detector or sample photomultiplied tube it only senses the emitted radiations from this sample so if you detect uh, uh, the emitted radiations from the source then we can account for the amount of the light that is being uh, emitted uh, or we can separately isolate the amount of uh, emitted radiation so this was about a typical uh, fluorimeter and commercially available uh, fluorimeters will look somewhat like this this image has been taken from an internet source coming to the typical uh, spectral fluorimeter as i said the difference between the filter fluorimeters and the spectral fluorimeters is the wavelength selectors here we use the monochromators as the wavelength selector Coming to the arrangement of the source of radiation, we have a xenon arc lamp here which generates the ultraviolet radiations which are made to fall on this grating system. We have studied a lot about this grating system in, system in UV visible instrumentation where uh, incident radiation is split into the component wavelengths and this emit, uh, I mean to say the component wavelengths will reach the sample compartment and the sample compartment is arranged in right angles as I mentioned the uh, measurement is happening at the right angles and these emitted radiations are again sent to a diffraction grating where the emitted radiations are made to fall on the sample detector so once we have uh, the emitted radiations we can also set up a reference of photomultiplier tube where the incident radiations are only made to fall on this 
reference for photomultiplier tube and each molecule in nature will have its own uh, excitation wavelength and it has its corresponding emission wavelength no uh, two molecules will be having same excitation wavelengths and emission uh, same emission wavelengths so any molecule you take for that matter in the nature they have their own excitation and emission wavelengths so this is a commercially available spectrofluorometer which is a image to make where uh, the one which we have at our lab and this is a very uh, accurate instrument or very sensitive instrument i can tell when compared to the ultraviolet uh, technique so coming to the applications of uh, this uh, fluorometric technique and this is the last concept which we are supposed to discuss and as we know this is an well established analytical tool a large number of applications are usually designed based on this uh, uh, technique where we are discussing some of them the first is the determination of uh, inorganic substances we have several inorganic substances uh, which are which we use uh, which we measure by using this fluorometric technique for example determination of ruthenium ions in presence of other met platinum metals and determination of aluminum uh, in particular alloy system and we can determine boron in steel by complexing it with benzoin we can estimate cadmium with 2 2-hydroxyphenyl benzoxazole in presence of tartrate and these are several inorganic substances which we can analyze by fluorimetry and a very interesting example i am taking next is the nuclear research where we are determining the uranium uh, in salts by uh, fluorimetry and this is extensively used in nuclear research and this is an important application of fluorimetry in nuclear research next as fluorescent indicators we have many fluorescent compounds which are used as fluorescent indicators and these indicators are mainly used in acid base titrations and the intensity and the color of this fluorescent compounds depend upon the ph of the solution in which they are taken up and i have some example here use in changes uh, from colorless to green in this particular ph range that is 3 to 4 fluorescent will change from colorless to green in this particular ph range that is 4 to 6 and quinine sulfate has its color uh, from blue to violet in this particular range that is 3 to 5 and acridine has a different color uh, that is green to violet blue uh, in the ph range 5.2 to 6.6 as fluorometric reagent uh, we use alzarin garnet b uh, in estimation of uh, this aluminum ions at this particular uh, wavelength at 500 nanometer with this particular sensitivity similarly we have 8 hydroxy uh, quinoline and flavanol for estimating this particular ions at this particular wavelengths with this much of sensitivity so we can use this fluorescent molecules as fluorometric reagents as well and another uh, uh, important pharmaceutical application which i'd like to discuss here, here is the determination of uh, vitamin b1 and b2 vitamin b1 is uh, nothing but thiamine vitamin b2 is nothing but the riboflavin uh, and the estimation or the determination of these two vitamins is done by fluorescence method and uh, it is a very uh, accurate and sensitive method so far uh, known and usually uh, we perform a practical on this so to conclude uh, fluorimetry can be used to carry out uh, both qualitative and quantitative analysis and as i have mentioned it since it is a very sensitive instrument the concentration or the working concentration what we work here is in a very dilute form when compared to the uv spectro uh, photometry and usually uh, this instrument is 100 times more sensitive than ultraviolet uh, technique or usable spectrophotometric technique determination can be done in nanogram range that uh, shows the sensitivity of this instrument for example determination of benzopyrin Uh, is done in nanogram range analysis of uh, organic aromatic compounds that are present in several uh, cigarette smoke air pollutants automobile exhaust etc can be performed by using this particular fluorometric technique and as i mentioned this is more sensitive and less complicated process less complicated in the sense the sample the sample preparation here is uh, very simple it does not employ any 
uh, expensive chemicals it does not involve any expensive techniques so that is the beauty of this fluorometric technique so for this i have referred these two references and this was the last uh, concept in fluorometric technique thank you very much and in the next session i would like to take up uh, the ir spectroscopy for discussion thank you very much